Hi nurse family, nurse Erica here, and today we're gonna to talk about common IV site problems you may encounter with your peripheral IV site. So this is not an all-inclusive, all comprehensive IV complications. Make sure that you review your textbook or your hospital's policy and procedure. Um, however, I'm gonna talk about the most common problems you may encounter. Okay, so in my previous video, we talked about how to insert an IV catheter. In this video, we're talking about common problems you might encounter. And then in my next video, we're going to talk about how to prevent those problems. In retrospect, I probably should have talked about preventative before complications, but this video is done, so we're going to go with it. But be sure to come back to my channel to look for how to prevent these complications. So that means don't put any IV sites in until you know how to maintain them. I'm just kidding. The other thing I want to mention is that if you saw my chest tube video, you saw that I'm trying a new teaching strategy on my channel where I ask you a question and then you answer. Of course, I can't see you, I can't hear you, but I want to challenge you to answer questions as soon as you hear them. So for example, in my class, I love to ask my students a lot of questions and sometimes they're afraid to say things because they think that they're wrong. Well, you have the advantage of being at home where nobody's around to hear or see you. So please start working on your confidence and say whatever you're thinking. And then I will be answering the question, obviously, and giving you the right answer. Now, if you have something that you're confused about, go ahead and write that in the comments. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get started. Okay, so looking at this first one here, the patient has just called the nurse's station saying that their arm feels wet. And so when we go into the patient's room, we see this. So if you look, what do you think you see? Before I answer, I want you guys to look at the site and what do you notice? Okay, so hopefully you're saying you're seeing sanguineous drainage coming from the IV site, okay? Which means that the IV site is leaking. Now, this will take further assessment. So what I should be doing next is getting a flush, okay? So I would get a sodium chloride flush and I would be flushing the site to determine is the leaking coming from the port of entry, the point of entry, or is it coming from um, where the angio cath meets the extension tubing, which is common. Sometimes we don't tighten this extension tubing, and so it can often just leak from here. If that's the case, we can just fix it. If it's leaking from the actual point of entry, then we're gonna need to change this IV site. Okay, so I'm beginning my shift, and I walk in to see my patient, and I do my um, immediate checks. I want to go look at this IV site and I notice that the IV site is, so what do you guys notice at the IV site? Well, if we look over here, we can see some erythema. And what I'm going to want to do is touch the site. If I touch the site, what temperature do you think would go along with this erythema? Most likely warm to touch, okay, it might be painful at the site, it might be swollen, edematous, okay, and so what do you guys think could be going on here? All right, well, anytime we feel warm, edema, which inflammation, and um, erythema, we're thinking phlebitis, an infection at the IV site. Hopefully, we would have gotten to it before it got this dramatic. I wanted to give you a little bit of a dramatic look. Um, but sometimes the site might just be reddened around the um, point of entry or the whole IV site might be reddened. So um, what we would do in this situation is we're going to take the IV site out. We're going to call a provider to come and look at it. And the provider may order warm compress and antibiotics if needed. This is an occurrence, so we need to write an incident report and have it well documented that we noticed this and what we did. Here you can see that my site is starting to get a little red in. It's not as dramatic as the previous one, but anytime you notice any redness at the site, you're gonna to wanna to assess further. Okay, so I'm starting my shift here and I always start my shift by flushing my IV site. And I noticed that my site, my IV site is not flushing. Now I did go ahead and check my clamp. My clamp is open. And I'm thinking that this IV site has become obstructed. 
maybe it hasn't been flushed in a while and so it's not flushing i'm not going to force it i'm going to have to go ahead and start a new iv site this iv site is no longer patent so it's not patent anymore all right in this situation i just received the patient from the emergency room they just had this iv site placed and i go to flush it and as i go to flush it i see a little bit of a bubble okay form right as i'm flushing it and my patient says ow when i feel it it's cold to touch okay now right now there was nothing infusing in it so when i it looked beautiful it looked nice and intact and dry until i went to flush it when i went to flush it is when i saw that i got a little bleb here and my patient is complaining of pain now let me give you another scenario before we talk, talk about what this could possibly be let's say my patient did have iv fluids infusing through the site okay so instead of me um having a saline lock i actually have iv fluid infusing and when i walk in the room i notice that this is edematous and it's cold to touch what could possibly be happening in these two scenarios well hopefully you said my iv site is infiltrated meaning it is no longer in my vein so it's infiltrated it's not in the vein and i need to remove this so i want to talk about infiltration a little bit further the other day when i taught you how to insert an iv i showed you what it looks like when we put in the peripheral catheter into a vein i want you to imagine that this little yellow tube that i have here is the vein okay So imagining that this is a vein, when my peripheral catheter is inside the vein, it is in my vein, and as I'm instilling medication or fluids, I should be just running right through the vein, okay? Now what can sometimes happen in an infiltration is that the, the IV catheter is no longer in the vein. It is now in the tissue, in the subcutaneous tissue. So as I am instilling medication or fluids rather than it going through the vein it is going into my tissue which is why i develop the swelling and the pain so the medication may eventually be absorbed into the body but of course it's going to affect the rate of absorption okay so we want to remove this iv catheter we want to notify the provider the provider will determine if we need to put a cold or a warm compress on the arm okay the other thing that we need to think about is if I was administering a medication that is an irritant, then there could possible, possibly be an extravation to the skin and the tissue. So that's why it is very important that we think about what we were administering and um, make sure that the provider is aware so that we can take the appropriate actions to protecting the patient. That's why it's that's very important that before you start any medication or any IV fluids, you always flush your IV site before to make sure it's patent, you make sure it's not leaking, make sure that it's not infiltrated, and make sure that there's no signs and symptoms of an infection. Now, I could have assessed my IV site fine and an hour or two hours pass, and all of a sudden my IV site has dislodged, and now my medication is going into the tissue. That's why it's very important that whenever you have anything infusing through the IV, you're constantly reassessing your patient to make sure that they are tolerating it well and that the IV site is not compromised. Right. So those right. are the most common IV site problems you may encounter with your peripheral IV. If you can think of something that I missed, go ahead and put that in the comments. If you're still not sure about something, please go ahead and put that in the comments. But I want to thank you all for investing in your craft, taking the time to learn about IV site problems you might encounter. And I also want to thank you for trusting me to relaying this information to you. I really love engaging with you all in the comment section. So if you're not sure about something or if you want to just leave a comment, feel free to write that comment in the comment box because I definitely read them and try to respond as often as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Also, please hit the like button and maybe even share with a friend. I appreciate the support. All right, till next time, have a great day. Kick. Hey, hey, hey.